Banjo and Kazooie is a masterpiece. The game is filled with creative ideas, amazing worlds to explore, and fantastic gameplay. In my opinion, Banjo and Kazooie is one of the best games ever made and the best 3D exploration platformer. A genre which sadly almost completely disappeared with the end of the N64. So you can imagine how hyped I was when Ukulele, a spiritual successor to Banjo and Kazooie, was finally released a couple of days ago. And I wasn't disappointed. The game has everything I wanted it to have. There are wonderfully silly characters, beautiful worlds, tight controls, loads of small puzzles, funny dialogues and challenging platforming sections. The game captures everything that made Benji Kasui so unique for me. But interestingly enough, Ukulele is surprisingly controversial. Critics are mixed and a lot of people seem to be disappointed in the game. One point of criticism I've seen raised is that Ukulele's world design isn't similar enough to the world design of Benji Kasui, but rather follows the design of other Rare games like Tui or Donkey Kong 64. So today we're going to take a closer look at the design of Kazooie's worlds in comparison to the worlds in Ukulele and we will try to find out what made Kazooie so great and if Ukulele really captures the spirit or is doing something entirely different. So are you ready? Let's do this! In order to deconstruct the worlds, I want to talk about three aspects, the structure of the levels, their size and the actual gameplay with which they are filled. First, let's talk about structure. The first thing that stands out in Kazooie's world design is that they're all structured around a single huge and easily noticeable point of interest. Treasure Trove Cove has the lighthouse at its center. Clanker Stage has Clanker. The Bubble Gloop Swamp has the Crocodile Head. Frenzy Frozen Peak has the Snowman. Gobi's Valley the Water Pyramid. Mad Monster Mansion the Mansion. The Ship Stage the Ship. And the great, great, great and amazing Clicklockwood has the tree. This structure is very important for players and actually really clever. The game basically gives every player a central point of orientation from where all other points of interest are visible. It immensely helps with orientation and makes respective worlds more memorable because they all have a unique central area. So let's take a look on how the Yuka levels are structured in this respect. Well, I'd say they're built around the same concept, but try to give the level always a unique twist. Triple Stack Tropics has the temple in the center. The second stage has a castle, but a second completely different stage within the stage. The third world breaks this pattern, but has a maze theme going on in general. The fourth stage is built around a well in the center, but takes place on two layers and leaves the classic pages formula behind. And the last stage consists of a couple of islands with one central island island for orientation again. In my opinion, Yuka pretty much follows the Kazooie layout, but tries to add something unique to the structure of each stage. I personally found it pretty easy to navigate and keep my orientation in both games. But the general structure of the stage is only one of many aspects when comparing the design of the stages in both games. Another aspect is the size of the stage. If a stage becomes too large, it is increasingly hard to memorize and navigate through it. And if an area feels huge but empty, the unique charm of a level is easily lost. The stages in Yuka are definitely larger than in Banjo, but the experienced size of a stage has to be assessed in relation to the time it takes a player to actually traverse an area. Let's compare the time it takes to traverse Gobi's Valley to the time it takes to cross Capital Casino. It takes approximately 22 seconds to roll from one side of Capital Casino to the other, which doesn't feel unreasonably long to me. Basically every point in the central hub of the stage is never more than 30 seconds away from the player. In Gobi's Valley it takes about 20 seconds to travel from one side to the other on the longer side of the map and about 15 to travel the shorter side. To traverse Bubble Gloop Swamp a player needs 22 seconds and about 18 for the longer side of Mambo's Mountain. Traversing Triple Stack Tropics in Yuka takes about 20 seconds on the longer side side and 17 on the shorter one. That's by no means an exact science, but it helps to show that all important points on the map are as close to the player in Kazooie as they are in Yuka. So the stages in Ukulele are considerably larger than they are in Banjo, but all major points of interest are not significantly further away from a player. That's because movement is a lot faster in Ukulele than it is in Banjo and Kazooie. After playing both titles back to back, I'd actually say that the movement in Yuka is more fun than it is in Kazooie. The roll move is really fast, but hard to control perfectly. The flap move allows the player to cover really big distances and the mid-air attack is a really cool addition and feels amazingly fast when used. If you want to give a player more and faster movement options in your game, it also means that the areas to explore need to become bigger. Ukulele offers faster and better movement options and therefore the worlds are larger. 
In consequence, Yuka's worlds also need a little more content, because otherwise the stage would feel lifeless and empty, even if it's not an all too reliable criterion to compare the amount of chigis to the amount of pages when analyzing the game in respect to game content. It is still rather apparent that there is way more stuff to discover in Yuka's worlds than there is in Kisui. In exact figures, this amounts to 10 chigis to collect in Kisui's worlds, but there are 25 pages in each Yuka world. So in these two respects, the general structure of the world design of the two games is largely the same. In both games, huge, noticeable points of interest reliably help the player to determine his relative position at all times, and the size of the stages is similar when assessing them relatively to the player's movement speed. Also, the amount of content compared to the amount of space seems to be similar in both games. In my opinion, Banjo's levels are structured in a similar way to Laylee's. But what could be the reason why these two games feel different to so many players while being so similar in structure. After playing both titles back to back, I've come to the conclusion that not the structure, but the actual gameplay is different. It's what you actually do in the stages, the kind of challenges you have to overcome that makes your gaming experience feel different from Banjo and Kazooie. The main activities that reward a pagey in Yuka are exploration, minigames and straight platforming challenges. The main gameplay in Yuka Laylee switches between these three activities. You beat a platforming section, play some sort of minigame and explore the world until you beat another platforming challenge, and so on. The game is really varied in this, and it's a ton of fun to explore all these worlds and beat all these challenging platforming challenges and tricky minigames. But if we take a closer look at what we do in Kasui, we can notice a difference. Banjo's gameplay heavily features exploration and minigames as well, but where Yuka has escalating platforming challenges, Banjo often has small puzzles, followed up by a super small challenge, which leads to another puzzle or minigame. Banjo's gameplay at its heart isn't very heavy in platforming. The platforming in Banjo is mostly used to go from A to B or to make super short mini challenges. But Ukulele often has long platforming sections, which start with a single platforming idea and then escalate. In return, Yuka has way fewer puzzles. I think that while the games are very very similar in design and setting, at its core they are different. Banjo often feels more like an action adventure game, where platforming is a part of the gameplay, but not the focus. We explore ancient pyramids, hunt down old pirate treasures, explore the secrets of a haunted mansion, save Christmas for a small bear family, and we help snorkel. Everyone always forgets about snorkel. Meanwhile, we do completely different stuff in Yuka. We fly through a series of hard to reach rings while under time pressure, make our way through a really tough roll challenge in a cave below a lake, beat a quickly escalating quick roll challenge in an overgrown cave and race on top of a sinking building in a swamp. Some sections in Yuka Laylee actually felt more like Fresh Bandicoot than Banjo Kazooie to me. Please don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that there are no puzzles in Ukulele or no platforming in Kasui. The point that I'm trying to make is that these two games, even though they obviously share tons of similarities, at their core differ in gameplay a fair bit. I'm not trying to say one of them is better than the other, I just enjoyed the heck out of Yuka and Banjo is one of my all time favorites, but I think a lot of people feel like Yuka isn't quite Banjo. And the point is, yeah, it isn't, but the problem is not that the worlds became too big in Yuka or that the game lacks ideas or creativity but that the game simply really isn't Banjo. It features way more platforming gameplay, but less of the action-adventure elements, which made Kasui so memorable. I really enjoyed Yuka and I highly recommend it to every fan of 3D exploration platforming games, but I think it would really do the game some good if it wasn't understood as a direct Banjo sequel, but its own game with a different focus, but tons of similarities to the Banjo games. It's something similar, not the same, but awesome nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially Jinjo! today and want to hit the subscribe button as well. The next video will be about ukulele as well. I started to learn some glitches and speedrun strats and I want to show you some of the really crazy glitches that are hidden in this wonderful game. I hope you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!